Welcome gamers, this is episode 3 of our Brigandine playthrough. We're finally in the, into the battle, so we haven't actually started actually com combat yet. I've got a lot to explain, I'm sorry about this. It's, it's a complex game and I do want to sort of, uh, I want to cover it properly. I don't want to just sort of rush in and, and do things automatically. There are certain things we do want to be doing automatically, like I've got to be thinking a little bit ahead, like he's always going to be moving ahead of our main attack. Which is not ideal, I wish it was sort of the other way around. We may even switch the leadership around a little bit actually with the dragons and the uh, and the support group because it's important that the dragons you know get damaged and then we heal them up afterwards not not have not the other way around so unfortunately we're sort of a, a little bit sort of out of out of sync there nothing we can do about that other than just uh, other than to reshuffle our forces afterwards um anyway so let's have a talk about a little bit about what actually happens through here and we'll see this actually we'll wait until we get into the actual combat let's just do it that way if we, um, if I just press the D key, I'm using the again just the keyboards. Have a bit of a look across. One thing you'll notice is I'm in prairies and through this side. I'm, I've got a, like a road that runs through that side. I've then got meadows and then forest in through this area. Now certain terrain will suit certain units. This one here you'll see when I hover over this bronze golem. He's level five. His uh, preferred terrain is mountain, so he's not great in the prairie, which is what he's standing on. But he's but prairie is sort of like you're neutral like everything everyone does it reasonably well on the prairies i'm gonna have a quick look to see what else we've got we've got like a wyvern which is the preferred terrain is the sky now sky doesn't matter where these things go it's always the same they, they don't get they don't have negative bonuses this one here with mountain will actually have a, a, a bigger negative by fighting in the forest than in the plain uh, because it's not his preferred terrain. This one's also... Now, these units here, if we have a look at... If I press U, we can have a quick look and see what these units have got. And so, if we have a look at the um, at the profile, quite often the profile can be very, very interesting to um, have a bit of a read. So, these are monsters with unrivaled defense capabilities. So, there's always important clues when you read this one. In some regions, these creatures are venerated as an ancient protectors of mankind. They have poor mobility and tend to trail at the back of the ranks, but excel on mountainous terrain. Their high HP and defense makes them a valuable asset in any defensive line. So, thinking, okay, well, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> what does all that mean? So, essentially, it comes down to their skill set so they've got like their skill that they actually have is a golem punch and i can press you to have a look at this one so a normal attack deals moderate damage to a single adjacent enemy unit so it's just basically a melee attack and you can see there it's got a power of 110 that's sort of the basic damage that it does the accuracy gives it a plus six percent to uh, plus six to, for accuracy uh it's not using any elements for the attack okay so that this is where we'll look at this when we come up, come into the actual attacks themselves range is one it does very, very well against ground units, but not very well against sky units. So that's sort of where it does, and it, it can be used, uh, like it does, like it can be countered as well. Like there can be a counter attack coming in if it does use this one. It's just its standard skill slash magic. There's no magic this thing actually does have. All right, so that's, and then if we just go back to the to the basic info, back, back in through here, you'll see it's got not wearing any equipment. Uh, its abilities are that it's got in, an inorganic body, so I can just go across, switch across there, and then press U again. So prevents the following status of condition. So it can't be poisoned, paralyzed, silenced, fainted, petrified, or charmed. So it's it's good in the sense that it, it can't, there's no, no nothing they need that can really come up against it. That's, it's, that's basically its, its basic abilities. And then when we have a look back over this side, level five, that's its current experience. It hasn't been in any fights just yet. Its combat power is 577 as a unit. Its uh, troop is uh, Monica. So it's under the status, the hero that's, or the rune knight that's in control of it. It's called Monica. Uh, hit points, so 569, which is a lot of hit points. Uh, it doesn't use any mana, so it doesn't have any magical abilities. Uh, it doesn't require any mana points to, to spend in the battles. Its attack is 91, which is high. Uh, its strength is 61, which is high-ish. Its agility is low. Uh, now, what this will then imp end up sort of impacting is that it ends up having the... Um, uh, the low agility means it's going to be clumsy. So when it does an attack, it's not going to attack very, very well. Like it's it's, it's attack is going to be it's going to miss a, like a you know, percentage of the time. So it's not ideal. Like it can be lucky and get a shot in, but these are not these are not sort of like um, these are great to stand in a line because they can take punishment, but they don't often don't deal out as much punishment as you would want. They've got very low mobility at three. Uh, they're in near zero intelligence. They're just basically machines, but extremely high defense. So this is where they excel. So they they really excel at taking damage. 
Um, as we saw their preferred terrain was mountain, magic cost is 45. Then the upkeep is actually fairly high in through here. It's uh, The upkeep mana is 23 for this particular unit. Rune growth, I'm not sure what that is. Um, I don't know what that actually does work with that one there. Actually, I haven't seen that one there. And they're not using any elements. The elements we'll have a look at when we have a look at, at one of our other units, I think. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll just right click to move out of there. So we can have a look through all of their different, different units. I don't think we have to really worry too much about things. They're defensive. Um, this one here is a um, is a wyvern, which is a flying unit, and uh, we'll have a look at those when they when they start to get into the actual attacks. They've got another range unit similar to our centaurs. They've got a healer unit. We're backing through this side. Like if I press you in here and have a bit of a look, we can then sort of. And if we go across to the uh, skills and magics, you'll see it's got like a, a basic attack, nowhere near as strong as the other units, but it does actually have a heal at range between zero and three. Uh, for healing 180 points and it has a cure as well if there's something where something's been you know hit a certain way that's going to be a bit of a problem and this is the element that it's using it's using sort of like a, a light or a goodness um, I guess it's I guess it would call it the power of light <laughs> in through that sort of sense in through there if we go back to our other side there's nothing tricky in here that's like an element a magical elemental there's another support unit a couple of at the back they've got a, a high level Pegasus this is a level 10. This one's probably having a bit of a, worth having a bit of a look at if we just look at the unit details in through here. So this is actually the this is the level up from the basic unicorn unit. So the Pegasus uh, will have a flight ability, whereas the other one has just got like it's on the ground. Uh, if we just go back across into skills, so it's got like still got the heal and cure, but now it's got halo as well. And if you want to see what that is, guarantees the next skill or spell of a of a one of one ally unit within a four hex radius will hit. Um, tar a target unit will also gain 1.5 experience from the hit. Now this can be very useful with the clumsy units like those bronze colossuses, so this is sort of where these things can kick in, but they chew up mana points to sort of use this one. The basic attack with the Skyhorn doesn't take up any, any uh, mana points, but, um, but using these does. And so if we go back to info, we can then see that it's mana. Actually it's already used one of its skills. So it used, um, it looks like it must have used Halo. I don't know why it would do that, actually. Uh, it had 204, so yes, yeah, it's used 88. So that would be, it's used that one, it's used Halo already. Going to the next, yeah, okay, well, it's, it's too, it, was, it, was sent, it was done too early. Okay, that's not very good coding, because <laughs> there was nothing for that unit to actually be used on at, at that particular point in time. And in fact, I think, I don't know if it did it on, on which unit it actually did it on. So this is the Sorceress. So we're looking at the Sorceress back in through here. We can have a look and see what she's got. Um, so we can get her basic stats. So she's level 13, so she's pretty high level. Um, you can see that she'll have low abilities in through here, but high intelligence. And, and her agility is not too bad as well. Uh, we can look at skills. So she's got Middle Spank is the basic one that she has, but then she has... Um, Geno Frost at, at range three. Uh, that is um, deals minor damage to all enemy units within a three hex radius. So she'll be wanting to use that one a fair bit. It's only minor damage, but it'll still hurt a little bit. Frost will be uh, will be against a single enemy unit within a three hex radius. Charm in through this side. That one could be dangerous. Inflicts charm on a single enemy unit within a three hex radius. Charm monsters are left behind if their commander retreats and can be captured after winning the battle. Okay, that's not too bad. We don't have to worry about that one so much. And flight changes the preferred terrain of a single unit within a four hex radius of sky. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, so um, I've used this actually when I was testing things to try to, to take people out of out of their preferred terrain so I could actually then hit them with ranged units. And it actually, it's, it's a funny one to use. You can use it for your own forces or for the enemy. It's an interesting one to actually have. Anyway, that's her. And we can let the profile then will go through essentially every single hero. And there's about a hundred of, of them, I think, in the game. Well, she's only an 18 year old, but she's quite high level. It will then just go through, you know, what actually happened. Um, uh, you know, with, with her backstory. And these are quite good, I've got to say. Again, it's, um, it's, it's extremely well done, this game. Um, we've got another hero. We've got three heroes. This this hero in through here is a monk, so he'll be a healer. So if we have a look at his abilities, just very very briefly, uh, actually he doesn't have any magic abilities. Interesting. So he's only got combat abilities. What's, what's his level? Info level nine. Okay. Hmm. All right. Okay. So that's um, 
Yeah, nothing much there we have to worry about. He's not very good against air units. That's useful to sort of know that one. There's his backstory. He's 36. And then the last one that we have over through here is a minstrel. So this will be like a bard character that will have things like charm. And you can see that she's actually got like elements in through here. This is like the nature elements for both attack and defense. Actually, what's this one here? Nothing for Cyrus. And she's got like water, or, uh, water attack, water defense back and through that side. So if we have a look at the unit here, so um, so I, I did mention early on that this that the the illustrations are very much JRPG. So if you're offended by that, probably don't look at this um, these uh, this series because it's uh, it's it, the content really is full of that. I like it to be honest. I I, I like this sort of the cultural um, cringe factor, I guess, of the uh, of the whole JRPG type thing and the manga, the manga sort of style. Uh, but each to their own, I guess. Each, this one here has got like um, you can do different things like uh, songs, but these are all going to cost mana points. It's got thunder which is actually does a fair bit of power damage. It does a fair bit of damage at a range of three. If we have a look at that one through there. So it deals major damage to a single enemy unit within a three hex radius. That's 91. So if we have a look and see what potential damage might come our way, if we uh, just go back to info, uh, it's got a lot, a lot of mana points to spend. So this is a dangerous unit. So that one is actually quite dangerous. Uh, nothing else too tricky with any of these. We've got a lizard man, which sort of works better in the swamps. Um, it's only level eight. So these are the these are units we will need to be sort of trying to kill off. Now we want to use our dragons for most of this, so let's just go back. As I said before, I want to keep away from these units. These have got these are quite mobile. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the, these behind for right now. So I'm just going to go across and just get them to stand by. And uh, that one there. And the wizard, I might keep it. I'll just get up so that they he also like this, sort of sits back a little bit. Um, I'll move this one up. Leave that one in behind as well. This one we will move ahead of the others. I'll just move it out to the flank. Just to start to protect so that these guys there is actually a zone of control that um, that you can't easily move through so just be aware of that one all right and this unit here there's nowhere really for, for that one to go so i'm just going to leave that one on standby as well um, these units i do want these moving up but i want to try to keep things cohesive so let's just get our dragons into position first now i can move up very very close but let's just move across to this sort of line stand by there by the way if I'm if I do do a thing like a move and I'm not really if I move to for example here and I'm thinking oh, actually I don't want to do that just press the J and you'll go back to them being able to make your selection if you do press standby it's too late because that's the last thing but um, you can you can go back if you're wanting to now both of these I'm just going to move that one across to there stand by and um, I'll move that one up. I mean, this they may hit the. This one may get into the into the. Um, actually, if I move there, that that one will end up in the in the forest, and I don't want that. So I'm going to move this one back, just back uh, back into there. Oops, where are we? Okay, and then she can move in behind. Some some of the units have got like attacks which are, which do multiple um, areas. Like these have all got like breath attacks, which can actually hit. Like if there's congestion of units, we will be able to sort of do a lot of damage. So just, but none of theirs. I don't I don't think any of theirs have actually got that. So I think we're actually okay in that sort of sense. We don't have to worry too much about what we're seeing there. Uh, we'll move this one across. I will just keep this one floating in behind this front line. Uh, then move these up. Oh, hang on. Press the right one. So we've made her a healer. Because what we want to do is we want to be fighting with our four dragons and um, and then healing them up as we go. If we lose a unit, um, 
uh, that's a bad thing. Like it's uh, we don't get them back. If we lose a hero, we can we can bring them back to life again afterwards. Now the demons are very very powerful if they're close enough. I don't think we're going to have any troubles down this way. I might just bring it out to this other side. Now I don't want to be on the mountain with this one. It's better off. This one likes prefers to be in the in the in the uh, in the forest. So we do want to get this one into the forest, but not we can't get there just yet. So I'll just move that one up to there and keep it on the prairie where, where it can still actually do okay. In the mountains, it's going to have negatives. Uh, this guy here does prefer the prairie. I'm just going to move him up. Again, I don't want to be within two of the of the like, firing distance of there, so I'm just going to move him back into there for now. And these are more for fighting later on. Um, so I really want the, the heavy damage to be done by the by the dragons. So that's sort of the grand strategy or the, the grand approach. So they're not doing much. So they're using this is good for me because they're actually they're actually getting uh, here they come good. good, good, good. Oh, he's coming. Right, so we did 140 damage, and we did 88 damage back. Now oh, there's a, a, they've got a little bit of extra attack going back in that way. Now these can actually fire, hit, and then usually run away as well. This is good for me. Okay, so here we go. Now we're into the actual fight itself. Now we've got our our uh, support units. Now the the um, if we have a look at the actual unicorns, because I think this is now going to be sort of where we want to be using these a little bit, uh, and so we need to plan where these are going to go. So if we just go and press U back in through this side and have a look at the skills. So it's got heal, which is a it does 180 at range three. So if it can heal, and but the thing is, if it moves, it can't use these. So that's the one that we want to be using. It does 65 of the uh, magic points, and we've got um, 146. So at 65, we've got two. We've got two of those. So we've got two heals through the course of the actual battle. So we have to be very, very careful how we do that one. Now, at the moment, one, two, three. I can actually heal up any of those. None of those are really worth it. This one here, I'm a little bit concerned about with the with what's actually happened there. So we may have to sort of do something with that one. Um, I also will have this one as well, just to help me a little bit. So, yeah, this one's a bit tricky. Now, these ones here have got, um, they've got like a, this one happens to have like a 100 magic points. It's going to be attacking with one of these, um, well, like, sort of like a, this is like a fire element, and it's, it defends with one fire element as well. So. Some elements are good against other elements. We'll have a bit of a look. If I go and click on this one here, and then just go down to skill and go and click OK. So I just press K there. It's easier to do it this way. And so I've got two different choices. I've got either an Acid Breath, which does uh, deals a minor damage to all units in a three hex straight line, never misses. Or I've got the Dragon Fury, normal attack. It doesn't cost me any, any magic points. Now I've got two Acid Breath attacks with 100, with because of the 100 magic points that we actually have. So let's just go and do that one. Now this one here, you'll see there that I have a, uh, a critical rate of 10%. I've got an accuracy of 86%. My power goes up slightly because this guy doesn't have anything defense. So I've got one little extra ability in through there with our attack power coming back in. And similarly, the one little bit that we have over through here means that when it does a counter attack, instead of doing 73, it's going to do 72. It's not, not a big deal. This one does have 100% though. That's not great. That, that particular ability that we have in that in that sense. So Dragon, the, the dragon, will ultimately at the end of this be down, um, his hit points will go from 473 down to 401, and this guy here will ultimately be down to 245. So I could do that one, or I could actually, I, I'm not gonna be able to easily go back around. If I just right click and right click again, and just go back up to move. You can see I can't really get in around behind this unit, so I could move further across over to this location near the swamp um, if I wanted to. It's, that's still meadow. It still gives me, I've still got plus five accuracy, plus five defense. 
because this is, this is our preferred terrain. It's not dramatically good, but it's, it is what it is. So I think what we'll do is we will actually go and hit this one. We, and unfortunately, the, this one's probably got really, really high agility, which is why I'm thinking it can defend itself a bit more easily. Um, <clears throat> I would like to get to this unit. That's actually one of the things that I do want to get to. So we'll um, we'll just yeah we'll hit that one there. I'll just go and um, grab yeah. So sorry, I'll just go back. Just go to skill. Dragon Fury. No point doing anything else. Good, we got it. Ninety five and seventy two came back. So we've now taken a little bit of damage in through there. But like it takes a while to bring everything down. Now that's that's one of the attacks. We now have this unit, which I do want to be bringing across to. Um, to get more attacks. Now, if I'd love this one to be in the forest, uh, but it's not going to be able to make it. Um, you know, did that one work? Yeah, we'll just go OK. Move in this case. And if I move to there, I do get a shot with that one. So I'll start to just work my way through this, this outside edge. The skill, the hunter shot against that one there, it goes down a little bit. Um, I think because of the agility of the other, the other unit. So we've got a, like a 85% chance we're going to get a hit, and it'll be down to 173 if this one does hit. Yep, so 72 points taken off it. It's not dramatic. Uh, now, this is the wizard. Now, we've got to think, where are we going to be wanting to fight? If we have a look at what he has got, he's got like a lot of different skills. If we have a look at his skill set. He does have like a, a hit, which is not that great, but it's all this magical stuff that we have. Now this one is within th range of three, that's solid. I don't know what that one does actually. It inflicts petrify on a single enemy unit within a three hex radius. This effect will not recover over time. Uh, we've got Exoblast, which is a within range two, which does a lot of damage. Deals massive damage to a single unit within a two hex radius. Curse, again, damage within a two hex radius. Uh, weakness, which, so we can actually start to weaken units in, in a three hex radius, lowers the attack and defense of a single enemy unit within three hexes. So if we find someone really strong, we could make use of that one. Uh, magic down in through this side, so reduces the magic power and resistance of a single enemy unit within a four hex radius, so that's quite long range. The Geno Flame for 186. This one is deals minor damage to all enemy units within a three hex radius. We're not close enough to use that. Uh, Venom is uh, one that uses, a, again, it deals minor damage to a single enemy unit with, with a three hex radius, has a 20% chance to inflict poisoning. And uh, we've got flame. Is there anything else? Yeah, the power. There's a lot of stuff in here. Flame is quite cheap. It's a range three. Deals moderate damage to a single enemy unit within a three hex radius. So we've got a few of them actually in here. And, but a lot of these you'll see, if we move, we don't get to use any of those. So we've got to be sort of, we've got to position him where he can then do the best damage. And really what we want is, we, I prefer him to be actually in the fight. So if he ends up where he is now, one, two, three, he doesn't get a shot at anything. But if I move him into there, he's going to be too susceptible to be hit. Ideally, I'd like him where that one is, because I can then actually go and hit some of these others. But if I move him across, if I just go and grab him, you're going to move and click in there. That's a good spot for him. Just click on standby. Uh, we do actually have this little unit, this um, goblin, which prefers the forest. Just move, just make sure that's not swamp there. No, that's prairie. These are definitely expendable, so don't worry too much about what you're doing with these. Just a poison slash and through this side. And so you can see through there, after we hit this one, we'll, we'll be down to 243. We're going to lose about 100 points, 98 points. You can see there with the power. And we have a poor accuracy. We're only going to do 65 damage, but we're getting... We're getting units around there. They'll eventually target this one because he'll be an easy bee. Oh, he missed. Okay, so the accuracy didn't work. And he got a critical hit back, so that was a big, much bigger hit than what we actually had. Now, we do actually have this one here, again, with his uh, magic abilities. He's got Silent. And I've got to use Magic and Protect. We've got 61 for Protect. I don't really need it uh, at this point in time. He's got 119 to spend. If he does use the protect, if it's, hit, which, it's within range 3, I could protect this unit that's which is taking a little bit of damage. I could have done that before his attack, actually. That would have been the smarter move. I might leave it, actually. Let's just leave that for now and just move him up. Again, we want him where he can support units. So we want him a, a, few, a few behind the, uh, behind the run. 
I'll just stand by there. And uh, now we've got these two units, the, uh, these with their abilities. So if we just go and um, click on that one, just go to magic. The heal was, is within range three. Now, it does a lot of damage, sorry, a lot of healing points. And we haven't taken enough damage yet to warrant that. What I might do is I'm going to leave that one where that is because they, they can't do these ones if they move. So I'm going to move this one across just into this location, which is not, again, not ideal. But we'll just do that. All right, so that one's now all set up. This one here, we're just going to leave on standby. Now, the main attack. So we've got a few different things here that's going on. We've got a, um, we've got a, a unit here which has taken some damage. Um, we've got our main unit here where we can use... I don't have any of these. I've got Glorious Cheer. So increases a single, single unit's uh, allies attack for a limited number of t uh, turns. Um, that would be useful. It's 50 points there. Crimson Terror deals moderate damage to a single adjacent enemy unit. So, uh, and Rose Drive is, is the basic attack, which does a lot of damage. Uh, let's just leave them for a second. We've also got Magic, where we've got Flame, which is within a range of three. Does 120 damage. And this one we're looking at, uh, we've got also like the fire abilities. We also have fire defense and we've got accelerate, so it increases the mobility if we needed it, but I'm not gonna do that one. Let's just do, let's do flame, and we'll do that on, I want the heroes, because if I can kill off a hero, anything with the same letter will then have to retreat as well. So if I do that, all of those units disappear. So let's just go for this one. 141, it's down to 376. Now, we have um, the next, look, all of these A's. I can do these in, in whichever order I like. Um, this one's taken a bit of a fair bit of damage. It would be good to have been able to, we should be able to heal that one with the healer. So I'll stay in the fight here. Now I have different abilities. I might just go back to this, this one here with the skill. We've got like Burning Fury will do 120 against this. And if I just click on that unit there or just hover over that one, you can see it'll do 155, which won't be enough to kill it. Um, it's still going to leave it with over 200 points uh, at the end of that. So it's going to be 221 points. So I won't be able to kill it this turn anyway, no matter what I do. So I'm thinking what I'll actually do with this one is, um, is I will do a different sort of attack. If I do the fire breath, it's got a range of four. And what it'll do is it'll actually hit that one, this one, and this one, all with a flame attack. It'll still have 241 left over. So let's just do the flame attack. We still did good damage and we, and we damaged the other ones behind. We almost got rid of that one at the back there. Um, now we've still got this one. Now we're going to be moving into the forest with some of the other units. So we can, I can do different things with this as well. And I will do that one just to get more damage across this other side. Um, this unit here. Let's, um, if I go to skill here, I've got also got acid breath, which is, which is range three or dragon fury. If I do Dragon Breath and do it this way, I then do more damage. Now, they'll probably come through and heal up this unit, I would think, in this, with this next fight. So I, I do two... I could get a couple of them with extra damage out this way. So let's just go and do that. So nowhere near as much as the big dragon. But it all helps. Now, we've still got a couple of units in through this side. Now, I've got this one here, which can get to there or there. Now, what I want to do is I want to use this unit... I'll be able to bring other units back in to help out this unit. So I think we're safe enough. I don't want to be losing this unit, to be honest. But I can do... This one's got... If we have a quick look at its abilities, skill and magic, it's got a flame shot, which does a lot of damage in a range between one and three. So let's go and do that one. I can actually move it to... If I had have left this one out of there, I could have actually moved it to there and then done a really good shot down through that side. I can actually hit, I can move into there and actually do a shot back this way. So that's still going to be okay. So I was think, looking at those as well, but I think that this is my better option. So let's go and move across, uh, just kind of click on it, move, and um, move that one into there. 
These are quite weak, so we have to be quite careful, but they do actually, these are one of the ones that do get to use magic after they move. So the flame shot, it's going to be 50 points for it to do it. So we've got three of these ultimately. I don't want to be wasting these. Just use your WASD keys. Line those three up there and uh, do the big shot. So we, we're aiming on this guy here. This is the one that we really want to get rid of. So we'll just go and press K. Down to, he's down to 97. Ooh, okay. Well, um, so we're doing a bit of damage across all of those now. This guy here. Now we've got a few things I could do. I could actually use the um, the acid breath, but I'm not going to kill him off. And I'm actually going to do damage to my own guy if I did that. So let's not do that. Let's go and move. And I can either move back into here or into this side. And I think I'm going to move into here to try to give some protection. Ultimately, I'll be able to bring other units back in to help with this as well. So we'll move this guy across into here. It's not going to be able to do much damage. I do have a skill. I can only, I've only got Dragon Fury. Um, we do actually we lose a bit of accuracy, I think, because we're hitting something in the air. Um, this one loses accuracy against us, but the power coming back, even if it does hit, is not going to matter. Much. That's good. All right, now uh, we have C. Now we want to be leveling. We want to be healing that one up. So if we just go back across, now she's only just got her priestly sort of ability. She's only got 184 mana points to spend at this early stage. Let's go to magic. Heal is within three. So I'm going to now heal this one up. Good. That one's up to nearly full strength again, which is awesome. Um, now the other thing we're going to be doing is I. I Want to be that's actually a B through there. We've got a few flying units. Um, oh, sorry, then we I can move her afterwards because of her old skills. She can actually move now. I'm thinking we move into here. If I do that though, no, I'm better off moving her down to here. I think let's do that. That way, we can start to move anyone that's a C can then come in and protect this, this area through this side. Got to be looking at the control range. Um, then we have the rock. Now the rock can actually get into that location, which is sort of this one's got uh, more protection. Like it's got a, it's got a better protection than um, if we have a quick look at these unit details. Its defense is 105, which means it's okay. So uh, and that's certainly going to be better than trying to like have other units come in behind these units. So I want to take that location there. So I, will, I might as well use the rock. Now I can move it into there, and if I have a look and see, look at the skill, I've only got like big claws, and if I have a look at this one here, it's more the power coming back. The accuracy is low against that wyvern, and if I just go have a look at this guy here, the uh, I do 107, doesn't do much back actually, so I might, as well, I might as well hit this one here. And it's got a very low accuracy coming and hitting me, so why not, let's just do some damage while we're here. So we've taken a bit of damage. It's, you've got to be careful. Like if it's if I, if that was going to do equal damage back, I probably wouldn't have actually done the shot. Now the next ones that we have, we've got a couple of them. We've got the centaur, and I want the centaur back into the into the forest, which is what its preferred terrain is. So I'll click on that one. Go to move. Again, I'll just get used to using the WASD, WASD keys. And so if I move into this location, I'm then sort of in behind everything, and I then can I can fire at things at a range of two away. Now these have also then got, if I press uh, skill and then just go hunter shot, I can do extra damage to this one because it's, it's got extra abilities against flying units. So I can do 82 damage there, I can do 73 damage there, and I can do, and because of the accuracy of being in the forest, I can do, um, I can do 93 damage there. This is a flying unit as well. I'm going to take this one out, so let's go and do that one. It's not going to kill it, but unless we get a critical shot, there's a 10% chance. So it's down to 13. Now that means that they're going to have to do something with it. That one's great. That one's just gone up to level 3. We want that to level 10, and then it will have a, a range of 3, which is really, really awesome. Now this unit here is also interesting. If we have a quick look at its uh, abilities, um, it's got Venom at range 3 and Curse. Now I don't think we can use the Venom at this stage. I think we're, I think it's too far away. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, it is, unfortunately. But I do want it to move in behind all of these, so we'll just move this one up. <clears throat> that way it'll have the ability to then start to use Venom in against these other units. Just do standby. And now we have 
our um, our sort of our, our hellhound, which we can use in different ways. I'm thinking I could use it down here to protect the other units. And that way I can start to sort of focus on attack, attacking back in this side, or I can use it back up in here. But I think I've got this covered, so I'm going to move. I'm going to move this one down into here. And so it's going to put a bit of pressure on the flanks in through this side. It's going to be units could still... Actually, they may not be able to now move into that forest, but we're out, actually outside of our, our range. They may target this with some of these bigger units. Probably should have moved it. Actually, I can, I can just go right-click. That was um, because I hadn't pressed standby yet. Let's do that where we're still inside the... Uh, the actual range of the unit. I'll just go stand by. <clears throat> so they've hit the rock. So that, that lizard man is there. Doesn't do a lot of damage. They're here. They're healing up. I thought they might do that. Attacking defences down, and we've been poisoned, and we've been silenced, so we can't use our special attacks. That's okay. Good, they've missed that one. Bit of an attack back. Yeah, we're going to have to move the rock back. So we've got a few units that are now struggling a bit. Oh, we've been pushed back there and pushed back into here. You did miss that one. It's going after our heroes. It's all okay at the moment. So reaction. And that one's gonna be dead. Alright, here we go. So it's now turn B's uh of uh, B's B's phase of things. So we have to now sort of think, okay, what are we gonna do? Actually, <laughs> I've run out of time again. I've <laughs> <laughs> I have to leave it here, guys. Sorry, there's just so much. Uh, these this, these first fights can take a fair bit of time because uh, the forces are so even. I'll, we'll leave it here, but this is the main focus of the game is these tactical battles, and it will take a little bit of time to move through. Unfortunately, this guy, we, we're going to have to cure that one. Now, we should be able to cure it, I think, with this one here. Let's have a quick look and see. Magic. Yeah, cure. So we can just hit that one with a cure. And all of those, all of those uh, status effects have now been, been brought out. That one goes up another level. So uh, that's that's the status effect now that's been taken out of out of the equation, which then means that we actually, I'll just do this one. Oh, here, no, I can't use that one just yet. Oh, we'll leave it here. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.